Machinery of this complexity, ingenuity, and expense is still rare in the early 1300s. And if one looked around the town of St. Albans for machinery which was even vaguely as complicated as this, the obvious other places where the abbey was building engines like this would be the, the great mills which they used to grind grain and corn. Well, the law was that all of the St. Albans citizens had to bring their grain to the abbey's great mills to be ground and pay the abbey for the privilege of being allowed to grind corn here. This obviously caused enormous resentment and there is rebellion after rebellion right through the 1200s and the 1300s against the abbey's right to exercise this kind of control over the basic economy of the city. The abbot, Richard of Wallingford himself, the builder of the clock, confiscated the millstones from the St. Albans city mills and had them cemented into the floor of the abbey where his monks could trample all over them as a symbol of the abbey's control over what the citizens were doing. In the Peasants' Revolt of 1381, which is barely 50 years after this clock, when the um, rioters broke into the abbey, one of the first things they did was to dig up the millstones, their millstones, from the floor of the abbey and take them away as a symbol that they'd regained the right to do their own milling. So the construction of the clock at the very moment when the abbot, Richard, is trying to extend his technological, economic and ideological control over the basic economy of the town is surely not just a coincidence. This is a kind of machine which not only represents the abbey's control over God's creation, but also it's a piece of technology which is absolutely tangled up with fights over technological innovation and economic development in the um, middle of the 14th century. <laughs>